Okay, I cheer for all mothers out there. I'm a mom, and with us now, we have a mommy blogger. We have Lindsay and Mommy Log. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thank you for having me. I was so excited to meet you because one of the things you told me is ever since you could hold a crayon, you've been writing. Yes. Your whole life. Whole life. Your whole life. Okay, so what is Mommy Log? So Mommy Log is my inner dialogue. It's my unedited, unfiltered, undeniably relatable book, diary of my milestones. As a mommy, you record your children's milestones, but they're also your milestones. So I don't have time to make a scrapbook. I wanted to have time to make a scrapbook twice. Yeah, you went out but, and bought all the stickers and all the fancy yeah. paper and you were ready to do oh, it I, and... Are you kidding? It was like, right. you're gonna be a Pinterest mom, you're gonna be a this mom, <laughs> you're gonna be that mom. Or you're just gonna be a mom, a really great mom. And that's what I decided to do, was just record my documentation of daily life. The good, the bad, the sad, the wild, the stuff you can't really make up, but it's really true and it's your story. So that's what I did, I would write for those 12 hours a day when you're taking care of these little things that are yours and hoping you, you know, do a good job, you decide to make stories, but they're always in your mind, the remembering of those moments. And then everyone would say to me, you know, are your children napping in a crib during the day for this amount of hours? Are they eating, are they drinking, are they doing this? And it was like, wow, that's my a kids, lot yeah. of information. My kids aren't doing any of that. No, right? and <laughs> even if my children were, there was a lot of things that were between those moments that were the milestones, not just the first haircut or the first tooth, but everything else, those moments that were just so unbelievable. And I had a lot of responsibilities besides just taking care of the biggest responsibility. And I would go from point A to point B, and my child, and then eventually my children, would fall asleep in the car. And for about an hour, I'd be like, oh, this must be that nap that everyone puts their kid in a crib. Like, well, my kid's in a car seat. Like, it starts with a C, so it's safe, you know. Right. They're buckled in. And I would write because it was the safest place for me to be the most authentic because on the days I didn't write, and I took a little bit of that time while they were sleeping, and I would go on social media, all these mommies were perfect. Yes. Unbelievably perfect, like flawless. Everything, hair, skin, nails, clothes. They made lasagna from scratch. It was unbelievable. <laughs> from, tomatoes, was like, from tomatoes that they oh grew in God, their own garden. 100%, right, right. they had the cows and the whatever. Anyway, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> yes. right? So I was like, so I don't make lasagna from scratch. If you can do it, unbelievable. But I, I do not. I make Michelin rated grilled cheese from scratch. Nice. Yes, I cut the crust, but mm -hmm. not the corners. Okay. But I said, my story here, there, it's missing. It's missing. Yes, your because, voice was missing. Yes, and I, and finally, almost eight years later, I decided to do the unthinkable and jump into the social media swimming pool and get my like weekly blown out hair and my natural curls exposed. And I put my story out there because as a mom, you know that mommyhood is a community. And as I said before, you know, my story is your story. And the stories that I share, they might describe my day completely as it is, but it might be your day too. My day today? So yesterday we were um, making some construction to the set, some changes, because we have a video that we're gonna be doing um, here at our, at our studio. And um, so my 16-year-old son, his name is Matthew, and for the longest time, for years, he'd always have his dad pack his lunch. And his dad and I aren't together, his dad would drive over his lunch, things of that nature. So finally, this year is the first year that Matthew, who's now in 11th grade, would let me make his lunch. And it's pretty simple. It's, you know, ham and cheese sandwich with Swiss. It's like one of these snack pack things, a yogurt, a, a protein bar, an apple, blah, blah, blah. Simple things, right? So I get to the studio this morning. I get a call. Mom, did you pack my lunch? Yep. It happens. It is. And I'm like, oh. I just, like, as a mother, I always try my best. Doesn't mean what I did yesterday, like when I had a client meeting and I made sure they still ate, you know, and I took all care of that. It's just like that one thing that you forget and you, the, the guilt the is guilt. like, mm. all right? So that's why I love, that's what I love about you. Is that, and you have memorable posts. What are some of your favorites? So, like I said, I write every week. 
but there are three that really stand out in my mind because I think they define being a mommy, not just me, but mommy a as a whole. Um, about a year ago, if not now, it's almost two years ago, the world changed forever and my children were told they couldn't go to school and we had to recreate a classroom. So that's my background, education is my background. And ever since I was a little girl, growing up, watching my parents be successful, specifically my mom, who is a career woman, my favorite day of the year would be bring your daughter to work day. And I would dress just like her and we take the train to the city and I got to see that she was simultaneously a career woman and a mother. And you never knew where the lines were. They were seamless. And I said, I want to do that. I want to make myself as proud as I was proud of her. So during quarantine, I turned my, ki my kitchen into Mrs. Mommy's kitchen classroom. Fun. And I brought my boys to work with me every day. I love that. And that was something that resonated with a lot of moms, especially moms who stay at home. And like, how do I show my children what I do all day? And it was really empowering to say that a career is what you make of it. Even if it is you're making lasagna in your classroom kitchen, you're, you're creating something, you're creating that moment. So that was really powerful for me to be able to give that to my, my children. And then fast forward, this summer, we watched at the Summer Olympics a really poignant moment of mental health, which I think people think of mental health as, you know, being sad or anxious or whatever, but sometimes it's something more. You know, moms always feel like they're going at really fast paces and trying to keep up, but sometimes they're upside down. And we learned and were heard of the term the twisties and Simone Biles told us that being bronze is golden and that was a really, really important message that I felt when they closed the ceremonies that being golden isn't a color, it's a feeling that you have and that you can go at really fast pace but don't miss the ride while you're doing it. So that was something that really spoke to me. And most recently, in the month of February, People were talking about love and giving love. And I thought that there was a missing piece in my life that I give everyone all my love, 100% of that. But there's one person I'm not giving my love to, and that's to myself. And Which is why, I don't know if you noticed, yes, but I knew that you're coming on. Hearts. And I wore the hearts for, for you. Thank you. For the Stubbs girls and a few of yes. the other segments I'm doing today, too. But I, I just knew that I was like, oh, you know, and I love your stars. Oh, thanks. Well, um, so, yes, so you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself. And I wrote a letter to myself because I'm always giving everyone encouragement and I forget to give it to myself. So I took the month of February with the, you know, feeling that sometimes you do. You have to send a message to yourself. Tell yourself just how far you've come, how far you're going to go, and believe in yourself. And... It makes you a better person when you love yourself because then you teach people how to love you. So, so sweet. Thank There's you. one more thing as we wrap that's on the card, um, and that is who is L. W. Pepper? Sure, she's me. She's another side of me. She's my non de plume. When I write um, for a long time before I showed everyone who I am, and all they did was just read my story, I my house is filled with all different kinds of redheads. I have 50 shades of red in my house. All my boys have their daddy's red hair. But I'm the secret spice in the family sauce. Paprika! Yeah, or pepper, <laughs> whatever, no matter yep. how spicy you want to go. Um, but yeah, so she's me. She's a play on my birth name. She's, that way you know she's you too, in a way. She's also how I make dinner reservations, because Pepper rhymes with my last name, so it just keeps it spicy. But yeah, so if you choose to read and you choose to listen, you won't just be listening to Lindsay, but you'll be listening to a, a little bit of a spice too. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you so much for having me. I, I celebrate you. Keep writing. Thank you. You know, just enjoy your journey because you're bringing a lot of uh, sense and authenticity, you know, to that space. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, if you have something that you want to vlog about, 
Uh, you can live it up with us right here. I'm Donna Drake, and thanks for watching.